Welcome back to some professional StarCraft 2, where I'm always happy to introduce to you, in my opinion, the most exciting player in the game, the most dramatic, the most emotionally taxing. It is the final boss. It's dark. And on the other side, a relatively, not a new player, but doesn't get featured nearly often enough. It is the Chinese Protoss. It's Cyan. No, not Teal, not Cerulean. Actually, is Cerulean like a blue adjacent? I don't, I, it's Cyan. In a best of three PVZ at the Masters Coliseum against Dark. Do you want to see Dark thrash him like he does everyone else? Or do you want a relative nobody to become someone right in front of your eyes? Well, either way. Like, subscribe, Jimmy. What are we, what are we at? One, th one, one thousand one hundred and twenty likes. And I'll cast another series. And, uh, well, I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. Hopefully it's about to get a little bit better. As I have it on good authority. Source, just trust me, bro. That this game and this match um, are a little bit extra. Now, what does that mean? I'm leaving it intentionally vague. But it's going to start out by Dark slipping a couple Zerglings into the base. One will get into the main. And scout the Stargate, conveniently. Not unexpectedly, though. I believe an Adept did make its way by. Almost gets... Okay, all right. Gets one drone. Looking for another. The Queen not having it. Get off my lawn. Can appreciate that. But off to a relatively standard start. An Oracle probably going to be turned into Moracles. Zerglings, no speed. Uh, well, speed's already done, actually. But Dark making no real efforts to put on any sort of counter pressure. I say that, and then he builds eight more Lings on top of the ones he already has. So that's enough to potentially delay or even cancel a third Nexus. Knowing the Oracle likely wants to go across the map already, Cyan. Thinking about that Nexus, the Adepts, handful of Zerglings. Assuming you can fit four in your hand. Uh, large hands. Um, but even more, streaming across. This is dark, essentially just trying to take advantage of players he deems are less capable than him. So, you know, everyone. Trying to... Making sure that Cyan is kept honest. And in this case, he's been found being uh, less than forward. The Adepts out on the map trying to sneak by, not expecting the Zerglings and not prepared for them. Already using a lot of the Oracle energy here. There's a very real chance that Dark can potentially cancel this base. He's at least being threatening about it. Still two Adepts, a well-placed shield battery going to make life difficult for the Zerglings trying to cut in there. And it looks like Dark is content to sit back and continually threaten, as opposed to committing with the Lings. He already has that map control. It's very unlikely Saiyan can move out with more than one Oracle now. As the Ling count is high enough that even if the the Adepts are in a good position, they could surround and kill him. Twilight Council, Forge behind. So far, oh, you see this? You can't go outside. All right, this is why I don't go outside. There could be Zerglings out there. You don't know. Ah. Stay inside. Watch more video games. All right, specifically these ones on this channel. But if you run out of those, well, maybe actually play. Eh, let's not be ridiculous. Well, the Oracle's coming. Committing. Hasn't lost any of them. Gets five more drones. Which is certainly something. Eight in total. Not bad. Not great, not terrible. Twilight and Blink on the way. Plus one. Alongside the Blink Stalkers. Roach Warren from Dark and plus one melee. Halfway done. So... So far shaping up to a relatively standard match. In fact, it looks like Cyan implying he's going to take a fourth base here. So instead of trying to put together some timing attack or uh, tempo-based aggression, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he moves out with the Blank Stalkers. But it does look like he has every intent of taking a fourth Nexus. He's still building probes. He's only added on uh, he's four gates right now. Just not nearly enough to sustain an uh, attack against Dark at the moment. But it's enough to warp in Blink Stalkers to the count that Dark has to build some units. He's at 66 drones 
He's got three bases. He's adding on two hatcheries, but the lair isn't even done yet. So with a, a couple oracles overhead and the stalkers on the ground, well, Cyan should have an opportunity. Maybe get... He doesn't have Blink done yet, though. So, plus one melees here. The Oracles just used all their energy on Stasis. Which, um... Yeah, he kind of jumped the gun on this one. The Blink and plus one now gonna try to recall out. Gets four Stalkers out of there. But if he had waited another, like, 15 seconds, it would have been a much more efficient trade. But instead, forced to use the recall, and now, well, there's enough stalkers to keep the fourth base intact. But, Dark not going to be too unhappy with that trade there. Infestation pit. The moment I think the lair completed, the infestation pit was born. Is it born when it finishes or when it starts mutating? I'm going to go with finishes. It was... Um... You know what? There's a lot of terminology here, and I'm not comfortable with any of it. We're gonna go with started. And that's a nice, non-specific uh, term. The infestation pit began. It was a dark and stormy wait. No. Just dark. Not stormy yet. But, plenty of blinking. Cyan, I think, sent an adept or two over to the left side. Zerglings cleaned it up. Stasis. One, one Zergling just staying near the other Stasislings in solidarity. Nice of them. Robo Bay on the way. Hive begins for Dark. So while he was a little late to the lair, the Hive will be literally the quickest it could be. Nice wall off there, actually. I'm 90% I'm sure that is indeed a wall. Charles and Bowser trying for something. Another stasis. Catches some lengths. Kind of a catch and release system, though. Unless you can stick around. Which I don't think Cyan wants to do at the moment. A Nidus alongside the Hive from Dark. Wasting no time in expanding out that tech tree. We got charge plus one armor. Now, baneling speed and plus one ranged attack. Plus two melee as well. Those banelings can one shot the probes at least for now. Tail on that new patch maybe. Um, but for now the probes, it's an existential threat. Because having a single unit or two explode in one-shot probes would be devastating as a unit. I think a lot of players would mind that. Adrenal glands on the way. Dark Shrine and Co oh, I guess we're getting everything. We're just kind of both sides filling in the tech tree. Stasis. Those Zerglings get a front row seat to the Corrosive Biles. Cyan is almost maxed out. He's got 87 probes, which is arguably too many. Though, at this stage of the game, when he still hasn't mined out of his main, I'd say just a great economy here from the Chinese Protoss. Beautiful stasis! Catching a huge percentage of that army. Actually knocks down an oracle with the corrosive bile. I don't know how he ever manages these things. Dark with 52 more links. Sure, the, the links are in stasis, but you can't kill them. I mean, it's kind of in the name. They're frozen, but then they'll combine with the rest of the army and uh, impromptu surround from dark. The stalker's just simply not great for holding down that position. It's like a war prism. Heads in towards the main. Some charge lots happen out. But dark easily cleans it up. More than enough army supply here. Some more charge lots attempted to get in towards the third or fourth base. Not going to happen. Another group of them sent out to the south. But Dark has so much creep spread that Cyan's going to be spotted almost immediately. The Ravagers partially splitting off. Adrenal Glands Ling's about to be done. And plus two Zerglings with Adrenal Glands will rip them to shreds, I say. On top of whatever Ravagers or Banelings happen down there. Cyan now up to 93 probes. Oh, the Oracles. Ooh, barely in time. Get out of there before the Corrosive Biles can come down right on top of them. 33 banelings for dark as now it's time to attack going to try to hit multiple angles night is attempted in the main stalkers warped in in time at least for now well he knows that's on the table but dark is all over the rest of it banelings rolling in the well good thing he built all those extra probes 
as he's losing a lot of them now. More veilings rolling into the third. 25 probes, 30 probes, and counting. No veilings in the third, but Dark has breached one of the base. Well, over to the north. He's breached the third base. Veilings trying to roll through, gets the robo. Colossus, Colossus on the field. Coloxin, actually, multiple, the correct plural. Corrosive Biles not finding much, and Dark is forced back for now. He did manage to kill 37 probes so far this game. I think most of them in that last attack. But Cyan had so many left over. 68, 69 now. Nice enough to continue his economy. And with the Colossi on the field, the most natural counter, the Viper, looking to yank him in. Two Robos. But the Colossi provide some backline support against all those Zerglings. They're okay against Banelings. Why are, why are we building another Baneling? Did he consume his Baneling nest? What have you done? Unless it died to some Zealots? Oh, nobody was looking. Well, it was definitely not dark. The Colossi out on the field. Roaches and Ravager. Zerglings on top of them. And down goes another one. He's actually able to get underneath because the Colossi don't have collision with ground units. This works against Cyan here. He tries to changeling block it in, but for the same reasons, it doesn't work out. Corrosive Bowels attempted, but the Colossi are just ripped to the ground. The Zerglings clawing at their spindly feet. The Roaches and Ravagers melting through the rest of their pitiful armor. And the Protoss army is dismantled yet again by Duck. A single... That's... Wait, that's real. That's a real Phoenix. Is there any anti air? I choose to believe the Vipers can... T I don't think they did. I think some charge lots got the, the Baneling Nest, but it appears they didn't get much else. 350 Zerklings have died. And that's just the beginning. Let alone all those turned into Banelings. Which... And the unit's lost is 27, but certainly more than that. Um, because it doesn't count the ones that attack. Because that's not losing them, that's fulfilling your destiny. Burrowed Langs. Still dotting the field. Finds a couple of them. Dark loves to turn the game into more of a campaign mission. Ultralust Cavern has begun. As you know what? Against Stalker Colossus, especially against the Colossi, the Ultras will shrug off those Thermal Lances and shoulder their way through into the rest. And Ricky, the accidental swarm host, will grace us with his presence. Now we got a game. Ultras, Ricky, Mass, Zerglings, DT Blink is on the way as Cyan refuses to go Sky Toss, and I'm here for it. Though I don't know how long he will be. Now, I will point out that Dark is not bothering with Lurkers. Mm. The Banelings will be boxed out by some of the Blink Stalkers, just forming a force field with their own bodies. Ah, uh, which saves some of the probes at least. Ricky has arrived. Dark has realized he's going to go, I don't know, probably burrow him outside the main or something. And now, it's time to test whether Dark has played against the storm. I fully recommend it. I've been loving it, by the way. If you watched on stream, it's my favorite stress simulator. Oh, besides StarCraft 2, of course. I mean, chaos management, my chosen genre. But yeah, totally. It, definitely check it out. If you're a backseat StarCraft gamer, you're going to love that game. This is not sponsored. I just like it a lot. I like good games for the fans. You may have heard. There's the Lurker then, though. Without Lurkers on the field... Oh, God, he saved her base. Cyan has very... He, he's not obliged to go... Oh, my God. Ricky! Well, he, why are you running away with the Locust? We have, we have so much to live for! Like seven more seconds! All right. Observer survives the onslaught from the spore crawler. Charge lots heading in towards the third. Will be met with Banelings. Though it looks like Dark doesn't want to waste too many on them. The stasis wall at the front. More zealots. And Dark is... He's struggling to actually deal with the zealots. He's down. He's dipping in the drone count. Not that that's particularly... Uh, devastating at this stage. Cyan has built quite a death ball. Zerglings. Oh. Chases him down with Blink. Still, so many Banelings. 37 Banelings. Storm is done. 
Colossi providing a bit of a buffer. More charge loss. Dark on a move command. The Zealots are slicing up the roaches, which are so graciously trying to move through them. Blinks out. And I don't think Dark realized the blink was there. Finally, the Zealots being cleaned up. 15 drones down. Dark still has a huge army, but he's done very little damage to Cyan on the other side of the map, at least recently. 80 probes, plenty of mining bases, 3-4 solid mining bases. Cyan now with a 1300 resource advantage, realizes that the only way this game could go sideways is if Dark goes underneath. And Lurkers on the field, spotted by Revelation. A great start here for Cyan. Who's been on the, uh, he's taken the initiative, essentially, since the Colossi came out. Gonna try to get some damage done with the storms. Not sure what's happening in the main. Oh, no. Anitus. Anitus has been unleashed. Oh, Dark is already struggling to defend at home. DTs versus Nidus, but he manually detonates. Or does he have an overseer? No, manual detonation. Oh, my God, Dark used the Locust from Ricky. He used the Ricky Locust. That's why there's damage on that pylon. Ricky comes through for the Nidus. Nidus swarm host in, but like, you know, in a, in a bit of a different method. The Zerglings are attacking the Adept from inside the wall. I can't believe Dark, even the accidental swarm host. Okay, or at least the um, bespoke swarm host here. Finding a way to be useful. And in fact, having those locusts, well, the DT is quite a, an efficient Nidus defense. He does clean it up. No carriers in production yet. The double Ds of destruction. The Dark Templar and the Disruptors are now on the field, but the Lurkers are gaining their range upgrade. Banelings are rolling in like this is Ice Baneling Escape. Except in Ice Baneling Escape, you're the Baneling, but like, well. Reverse Ice Baneling Escape. Baneling Attack. Baneling Strike Force. Well, the Banelings get 23 probes, so whatever they were trying to do, I'd say mission accomplished. But wait, there's more! I think he may have burrowed a couple, but dealt with. Um, what am I watching? The amount of effort that Dark is putting in to make this Nidus happen. The DT is still in the main. So many lurkers here. Tries to dodge away. Clips one. Great storms. Good feedbacks. And so far, Siam is making a lot of progress. He still has the oracles. His management of all these spellcasters has been impressive so far. But Dark does have those ranged lurkers. And without a carrier-based army, it does get harder and harder to dislodge. How many lurkers on the field? 16. Remember the Ultra Cavern? I think Dark does and chooses to actively ignore that fact. Well, recall up to the north. And taking this center base is a big deal. One of the bases that is usually heavily contested in the later game. But Dark hasn't even tried on his side. So there's a chance that Cyan might be able to deny bases outright if this game goes longer and right now well dark still has to weather this attack and the storms are looking good really managing disruptors blink stalkers high templar they all require their own on top of the fact he's got colossi in there parasitic bomb to kill um there's a mothership in production honestly i think the way cyan has been playing the mothership actually fits as an option for a recall. This is not your new patch mothership. It still requires energy. It still can be abducted. Yes, indeed. Probably the majorest, most majorest weakness, which is totally a sentence. Indubitably. Most bigliest weak weakness. Zealot and lurkers taken out by the disruptors. Great feedback on the Viper. Storms soften up the front line, but the Lurkers burrowing forward. Supplies dipping on both sides. An incredible game, I will say. Cyan really on top of it, while Dark is struggling to keep up. Burrowed Zerglings. So obviously, a Disruptor could do some work on him, but... Ricky is still... How many kills? Ricky has one kills. But he won't stop trying. All right. He's got... You got gumption, son. But you're in way over your head. 
Yep. I don't. <laughs> The Disruptor Volley, a full salvo, obliterates like eight lurkers. In this, in the last two minutes, he's taken out 14. Beautifully done. Some Colossi step a little too far forward and crumble. But really chunking up that lurker line with the Ruptors there. Beautifully done so far. Mothership. Anitis. Oh, no, the changeling slipped in. The changeling. There's no DTs at the natural. The Nidus. Oh, he finds one. Cyan. So far, doing a great job of keeping tabs on everything at home. He's got a very dangerous army. Fires off a volley of eruptor hits. And now, the mothership. We're going to take a pause at a very awkward timing. It ends with go, go from Dark. So it's quite a stressful situation for him. He does have a slight supply lead, but he doesn't have that much. I mean, if he gets an abduct, but what is he going to kill them? Here's the thing. If he abducts the mothership, what is he going to kill it with? He has four queens and five hydras. That's not. Oh, well, you know, you don't need to kill the mothership if there's nothing under it. It's not exactly the highest. I like the, um, so the mothership does six or seven attacks, all of which do six or seven damage. I'm not sure exactly the number on it, but I like the, uh, the cannon, not cannons in general, but the idea they strapped like seven sentries to it. That's, that's what it is. That's why it does so little damage. All right. That's why all this, that's why it costs so much gas. And is such a big spellcaster. Makes sense. All right. Because this game's all about realism. The lurker count has just grown too high. The carriers are required. The ground army, as Dark has demonstrated so um, tactfully for us, is going to get dismantled by vipers. No matter how good your feedbacks are, the vipers are still likely going to be able to pull out key parts of the army into the shredding spines of the lurkers. Ricky is still here. He will uh, greet the lurkers. The lurkers ignore him. Oh, but is there detection? Now, this is awkward. He has to blink over the top so he doesn't get sliced to pieces indirectly. Neither player has detection, but the revelation there. Unfortunate that... Wait, is he... How is he even attacking? How did he attack those DTs? Was there detection? Okay, I don't usually do that. I need to go back. That was crazy. How does he have vision? Does he attack his own? He sliced his own lurkers! Wow! Dark. What a brutal... Yeah, I wasn't sure what I was watching. It was kind of hard to tell. Dark eviscerates his own lurkers just to get his the DTs in the bargain. God, he did that so quickly. Like, I wasn't expecting how... how ready he was to do that. But Dark... Against the mothership, the time warp slowing things down. He pulls out a few of the disruptors, uh, realizing that honestly, there's not much capability to actually kill the mothership. He can just dismantle the army underneath. Another Nidus. Incredible game from Siren. Really keeping up with Dark here. And it feels like he has the initiative. No! Jimmy Mike, it was Jimmy! Jimmy! Get out of the game! How many times? I told you this in the past, and now I tell you this in the future. Oh, don't talk to me about time warps. Jimmy Micro has left the game. I knew it. Uh, double. There's been an Ultraless Cavern done for quite a while, but Dark has not found an opportunity. There he goes up to the north. So I am starting to crumble. As he just doesn't have the army to deal with the lurkers. Yanks in the oracles. Make sure they're there. Yanks in the mama ship. But, I mean, well, disruptors underneath. There's just not enough DPS to kill it. Parasitic bomb, bring it back to your friends there. Gonna be kind of annoying. But there's just not enough hydras to kill it right now. Mothership now permanently half health, but... 
the lurkers have just sliced through the third entirely. They're continuing their efforts forward. A couple DTs could really help now. Does he yank the mothership? Oh, feedbacks are good. Disruptors on the front line. More feedbacks slowing things down. The storms, he's trying to... Well, he's storming his own interceptors a bit. But he's getting a lot of the hydras as well. The mothership at 1 HP! Okay, not 1, but like close enough. 10 HP. Only a handful of hydra attacks away. And... Oh, it's still alive! Staying alive. One hydra. Recalls the mothership. Back to the natural. And, well, gonna deal with the lurkers, but Cyan has dipped to 141. The income still in his favor. As dark as mined out of most of his bases. He's only got two mining bases. Cyan actually still has, well, not the same two, actually. <laughs> He's been mining from this northern base, but the Zerglings are now starting to make things difficult. Yeah, the Adrenalings, even with shield battery overcharge, not enough. I've been really impressed at how well Cyan has been handling this late game Protoss army. But. Dark is now like we're kind of being dragged into this low economy situation. And this is where Dark thrives. He's able to really get the. Is Ricky still. The, oh my god. Three kills. Three kills. Ricky alert. Three kills, everyone. Three kills! Not one, not two, three kills! And however many failed Nidus into the main, so... We now got Corruptors on the way with 1-1. One, one. The carrier count has forced the game into more of a slowdown. The carriers are forced out by the, uh, the lurker count. There are just simply too many of them. And Cyan has been able to rebuild with that economy. Now we got a whole lot of, uh, I assume, Rochaling up to the north. The mothership taking spore crawler fire. Disruptor hits and immediately healed by the queens. Yanks at the mothership. She's still got a lot of shields about her. The zerglings are going to ransack that northern base. Mothership Time Warp attempted. Is there enough energy for another one? Not quite yet. And more beautiful storms. There's not enough underneath. The Archons are just rampaging. The Mothership just off to the side. Parasitic Bombs helping out a lot. But the Zerglings are still working their way through. Dark maintains a solid supply. There's still a lot of carriers here. 42 probes dead. As Cyan. Well... He's still got the Death Ball of Death Balls. Still has a ton of army supply here. Dark doesn't have detection for the DTs. Does he have enough to kill the carriers? Because not that much income left. As only that base in the bottom left. Not too many more mineral patches. Dark is completely out of gas. The mothership being targeted. Time Warp used! The Mothership lives! What a save! So many volleys forced! But the carriers are still firing! The Mothership tanks so many hits! Are the carriers enough to deal with it? The Corruptors, those Archons, and Dark taps out! I don't know, Dark. Was it done? I don't... I... Hmm. He's got five Hydras in production. So here's a key part. Is... Yeah. He's gonna lose his detection and there's still DTs. That's the problem here. As well as Archons. Six Hydras and ten Lings. It might have looked a little quick, but honestly, the Mothership eating that many hits? Well... Huh. What a crazy game. I am so impressed by Cyan there. H hanging with Dark that long. And I mean, he won. It was a very close thing by the skin of his non-existent Protoss teeth. But... Still dicey. But didn't go cares. You simply, you simply require... Um, 
the carriers against the lurker count. That's that's how it is. That's how it be. All right. There is no ground army, especially when vipers are fully operational. That is going to compete. So, what? We go into game. We play best of threes for a reason. You pull one. You fool dark. And well, uh, he, he rarely gets fooled again. I don't think really that counts as fooling right there. Cyan just with a more solid style. Probably than Dark is, is used to. No. Oh. Alright, jumping into game two. Jimmy, as you as you know already, has been struggling with uh, the games. But Game two. Cyan with some top tier. Impeccable control against Dark. Dark not reaching for the lurkers until probably too late. The... I think Ricky lived throughout that entire game. For better or worse. Seems like for worse. Another key point. I think committing all the Zerglings and Roaches, like 40, 50 supply of them up to the north, during that last attack, uh, clearly did not pan out there but cyan able to keep it together it was still such a close thing but well done well played i will say does make me a bit more interested in the late game mothership potentially in the new patch assuming you can get there that's always a big assumption, but... Uh, I love the time warp usage. And just to slow things down, the mothership itself is, is relatively swishy. It was that specific scenario where... Cyan was so low on the carrier count, the dark didn't really want to go for corruptors. So it actually became quite effective. As if they don't have corruptors, they don't have an easy way to just outdo it. You already saw how ready the Vipers were to pull out the Disruptors, the Colossi. So, uh, there were still plenty of targets there. But the Mothership providing a lot of support. Hmm. Stargate. Wow. Bold. Overlord will see it immediately. Dark takes the forward rich Vespine base. Mm, of course he does. What's it going to be? Now, I feel like so much of the time, especially when Dark does it, but when anyone does it, taking that base is... It, it's trying to bait you into doing something. Mm. Ooh, he gets out with the Adept, and I believe it immediately died. If you lag, get out. I bet it was Jimmy. Yet again. Avoid Ray. And then a for is this a charge lot void ray? That's immediately what I think of seeing that forge. Or even just one void ray to deny scouting. And then a whole bunch of charge lots. No, it's a cannon rush. I don't think it's a cannon rush. It's a bit late. Void ray lights up. Burns through the oven. Robo behind. Two gases. What? Now that's an odd one. Really expected to see the Twilight Council behind it. Especially with the Forge. It has uh, no weapons up here. I guess for Colossi, but the not unexpected Roach one. Because he's up against what's very likely to be Roach Ravager. I guess Disruptors are on the table. But there's going to be that extra gas. 
from the ridge past me. It's not actually extra, it's just you mine it twice as fast, which means you mine out of it twice as fast as well. But an extra boost for less drones. Not a, not honestly, I don't think it's nearly as huge as the gold minerals early when it comes to uh, Zerg production. Okay, not nearly as huge, but it is, it is quite a nice boost. But I think Cyan is right in not over uh, trying to do some sort of crazy all in. I say that, but the more I look at it, the more it seems like he's going to try to do some sort of crazy all in as he's faking his third nexus. He's adding on a bunch of gates back at home. And he's building immortals. He's trying to convince Dark he's taking a third. Dark keeps sending Zerglings across. But it's actually go Okay, it is charge lots. But with a few extra steps. Those steps put together by the immortals. Dark has 60 drones now. He's pretty comfortable to just build units from this stage. So Cyan's gonna have a relatively thin window. Got Templar Archives on the way. He isn't building probes at the moment. So, kind of a key indicator. Are the rocks, the, the bone trench rocks gonna be taken down? It looks like it. It is a big all-in here. But definitely a, a more long-winded one. It's going to have at least one Archon. This is giving Dark a lot of time to build up, though. He's got a Spire on the way. He's got another base. I don't. I wonder if he'll realize plus one is already done. The Immortals were spotted by the Zerglings. Ravager's already in production. Yeah, Dark has been scouring the map. Ever since he saw how late the third base was. So... Plus one. Charge not quite done. Already Ravagers here. Is there a Prism? Now, without the Prism, this is quite difficult. Charge finishing now. But a lot of the Zealots already down. Feels like Dark has had a lot of time to prepare for this. And that means... It's going to be difficult to get too much done. Against what is about to be a critical mass of uh, Roach Ravager. Enough that Charge Lots can't even really hope to get any sort of surround, I would say, is what a critical mass looks like. Well. Goes in towards the main. Changeling spots the rest. Probes in production, so saying kind of pulling back from the all-in aspect of this. Dark doesn't have a ton of tech, so that is very plausible if he can kill some drones, especially. Yeah, they're all stacked up on the extractor there. Hold position. Recalls the zealots. Gets three drones. Mutas. In production. A, so this is essentially a reaction to the fact... It was just like charge lots. He, there is technically a Stargate. If he was building phoenixes, he could deal with it. But this could easily undercut any sort of progress or momentum that Cyan has. As he's not building Blink Stalkers, he has a couple Archons that he could maybe try to shimmy around to chase down the Mutas. But very unlikely to actually kill them, as Dark do does have a, a heartbeat and a pulse. And that means he is able to move out of the way of Archons before they get in range. Alright, the Mutas fly in. Oh no. So this is going to be one of those base trades. A base trade is when someone, both sides lose a base. So this may just be a base kill. Oh no. Pylon depowers some of the production. There's not nearly enough on the ground. Well, some Archons. And Dark only has to survive. It looks like he's not, not gonna stop at that. He's gonna murder this army outright. That's not remotely enough. Dark takes it back. A pretty comfortable victory here in game two. Cyan, I think, got a little too clever for his own good. Trying the, the immortal charge lot timing. Um, kind of a bit wishy-washy is the technical term on that. Uh, not really deciding whether or not he's going all in. Kind of trying to fake a third. 
Um, not really committed in any direction. So Dark just... Bop. But we're going into Ancient Sister. Which is another much more macro-oriented map. Maybe not as defensible as uh, Gresvin. But still not horrible uh, for the more long-winded macro plays. Neil Humanity, not so much. Not so much. As Dark especially had that early gas. Um, so not surprised I had tried something. But I think he has an opportunity here going into it. I, I'm still quite impressed, especially by that game one. I like the ideas there. But here we go. Game three. Jimmy, please. It's at one it's at once again this time. I remind you to like and subscribe. It'd be awesome if we could get 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year, because that is a round number. Um, and it does seem, actually, uh, within reach. I want to I wanna talk about, as it seems, no, no shenanigans, really, a little bit about YouTube shorts. And for some reason, YouTube seems to be showing off some of my old shorts, which um, is kind of a weird statement to make out of context, but uh, which is great. I like it. Um, we're actually getting a pretty surprising amount of subscribers off that. So anybody who saw something short and wanted something a little bit longer, I'm sure a lot of people could empathize with that. But uh, thank you for being here. Tell your friends. Um, tell your grandparents. They got maybe maybe got something to put on the TV. Um, don't know why we went to that, but here we are. Just just narrowing down the options. All right, tell the next telemarketer who you actually pick up the phone for. Uh, maybe, maybe don't do them. And also, who who picks up their phone? You guys have phones that you ignore when people call you. They say if they're not on your contact list, like what what's the point anymore? All right. Where were we? Game three: Dark versus Cyan. Cyan putting up. A better showing than the vast majority of players against Dark. But still, one to one, going into match point. What will we see from here? Does he try? He hasn't started. Okay, the Stargate should be. Yeah, there it is. Stargate. Not building the Stargate before Warp Gate. So there's a lot of reading into whether or not someone builds a warp gate because it's kind of standard to delay warp gate slightly in order to get that Stargate 50 gas quick. Which is almost so much, it's so much of a tell because you can see the cyber core does its little widget, fidget spinner maneuver um, when it's upgrading. So uh, by just getting warp gate early, there's still that extra question of whether or not he's going Stargate. Though I'm sure Dark fully expects it so i don't I, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised the zerglings always seem to get in and well, if he wasn't sure about the stargate before when he goes up the ramp with the zerglings well, he's actually just wants to fight the probes here which um you know is gonna be he may not get up the ramp mm, one zergling gets up there and never mind all right Let's see. No, no more mind games. He just saw the Stargate building an oracle. So that kind of gives away it's a Stargate building an oracle. Very nice of the Stargate to advertise what's building right on it. Inside of it. Kind of unique in that, actually. As a building. All right, two adepts. Trying to get some damage done. You know, not doing horrible in, in the sheer mining time loss there. Actually, only gets one drone. It was pretty horrible. A lot of mining time lost, but... Two adepts are pretty costly for one drone overall. Oracle burning through. Get some of the larvae, which are surprisingly vulnerable to the pulsar beams, though maybe not that surprising in hindsight.
two, and a quick twilight here. Is this a Depp Glaives? What are you doing, Cyan? He's building a lot of adepts. Like, why do we have a twilight? No. That's the question I want answered. It is! All right. Adept Glaives in current gear. Now, if Dark doesn't get a Roach one, then this definitely can do some damage. Zerglings are okay, but obviously they're going to be sliced up by the attack speed Adepts there. And with plus one melee, they're still okay, but it still comes down to numbers. There is no Robo. And the fact that he's sending in these Adepts at all, he's actually just going to complete the shade, start working his way through. Dark at 58 drums, going to lose a few of that number. It does seem that Cyan is quite committed to sending in his units. He's about to Twilight upgrade and then losing them seconds before. But in this case, killing seven drones and a couple Zerglings, I think was worth those four Adepts. And also probably threw Dark off the scent a bit. As after seeing someone send in four Adepts, you're not expecting them to make a bunch more adepts, but he does have 20. He's still, still just building certainly. I don't know if he's expecting a follow-up or was trying to put one together himself. Maybe some sort of bane bust. It's a little late for that now, though, as the adepts have already shaded in towards the front, making it across the map quite quickly. Yeah, trying to get that bane link. Indeed, succeed. Adepts complete their shade in towards the main. Going to get behind the mineral line. Plus one melee, five seconds out. Two banelings done. Needs something, but Dark is clearly struggling to deal with most of this. The banelings rolling in, and the adepts manage to shade away in time, though. The Zerglings get a lot of surface area at the natural here. The banelings will finish them off. So, ends up losing a lot of the adepts relatively cheaply. It hasn't gotten too many. 13 drones, 35 Zerglings, but for 21 adepts... Yeah, Cyan does have 62 probes behind this. Dark is casually building three hatcheries at a time. Yeah, there's a lot of Zerglings headed across the map. No upgrades here. Just gonna go for the shield battery, which is, is quite a direct solution. Gateways coming together, but Dark not dealing with it. Trying to burn through the Banelings. But, oh my god, the probes sacrificing themselves. Eight of them down, so the rest might live. Maybe not the ideal scenario there, but... He does defuse the threat, at least for now. Infestation pit is done. Dark might... Oh yeah, are we gonna rush hive? Indeed we are. More drones dead. Four of them taken out. But 70 drones left over. Which more than enough to continue up towards that hive tech. Cyan on thin ice right now. As finishes plus one attack. But the extent of his tech is Adept Glaives. And I guess he has Blank as well. Which is quite important since he has 13 stalkers and 3 Adepts. Ooh, blinking forward towards the Lings. A dangerous game. But he still has some oracles to back him up. And Dark, well, he's getting a Roach one. He didn't get a Hydra Den. He essentially got no Hive Tech, or at least, like, Hive Tech starters here. So it looks like it's going to be Ultras, as well as just highly upgraded Ling Bang. Now, Stalkers are an okay but not great counter, especially when it's a mass Zergling Ultralisk. Not that I think he needs much more than Zerglings now until Archons hit the field. Hive is done. We got Templar Archives, plus two, plus one for Cyan. Filling in those Protoss upgrades. Dark starts Adrenal Glands. Nothing else out of the Hive yet. Is that the first Robo? Yeah, just now adding on the Robo. Plus three melee for Dark in the Ultralisk Cavern has begun. 
road speed on the way as well, so maybe we'll finally see some of those ultras. Overlord spots the uh, Templar Archives. Dark actually a bit supplied, but he's got plenty of OBs on the way. We'll see. Templar warping in. Is that more Archons? Seems so. Indeed. He doesn't have uh, Storm on the way, so. More Zerglings. So many Lings on the field, actually. 120 Zerglings. My god. Oh, beautiful stasis shuts down a huge clutch of the Langs. Forced to cancel on the rest, though. Oracle's trying to burn through some of these Banelings. Uh, gets through most of them, or forces to cancel. Gonna try to surround some of the stasis Langs. This is, of course, taking valuable time. Uh, it'd be nice if he could just cancel the stasis. Hey, he's gonna try to use the Zerglings as part of the army. And in fact, the unstasis Zerglings are starting to rip through even the Archons here. The Oracles have to come in and support. We got some Banelings of stasis again. Banelings trying to roll through. Ultra's in production has to body block the Banelings. Stop right there, but... Trying to get some counterattack damage done. Zergling's wrapping around. He's on creep as well. Stalkers just don't stack up. And an Ultra on the field. The Banelings dealt with by the Stalkers. But the Ultra forces him back. Caught between a rock and a hard place. Tries to recall the Stalkers. How sad is that? Ripped to shreds before it can complete. And Dark is just running over the field. The Ultra is just the icing on the cake. But he's going to eat it too. Dark. He took offense to that first game. Cyan with some interesting ideas, but wasn't able to replicate the sort of situation that got him to a game three. Dark reasserts himself, as he so often does, and is able to take it two to one. But still quite an entertaining series. I really like what Cyan was doing there. The mothership showing some promise. Of course, not the easiest unit to just whip out, but once she's out there, Mm. A lot more interesting. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you got the means and motivation, make sure to check out uh, YouTube membership or uh, Patreon if you got it. Uh, otherwise, it's awesome if you can like and or subscribe. Well, ideally and. Let's go with and. Uh, let's not make it or. But thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you to Masters Coliseum and World Team League for sending the games. Good luck. Have fun. I hope I made your day. A little bit better. Thank you for watching. Stay chill.